Hi everybody, it is time to talk about wood. So I've, I've got an old video where I talk about the best woods for wood burning, but it is time for me to stock up on wood here in the shop. So I thought I would cover some of my best wood sources with you guys. Uh, so let's jump into it and start talking about it. So this is your first time here. Welcome to the Power Crafters channel. This is where we talk about everything wood burning and I encourage creativity through pyrography art. So if that sounds like your jam, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to comment and like, it's a great way to support my channel so that I can keep making content. And I said that a little weird, but I think you get the gist. I have a bunch of different ways that I source wood and there are some things that are better than others. I think most people want to like find the easiest way to get inexpensive wood. I mean, whenever you're like starting a business or even if you're just, you know, making things here and there for people, um, you know, people want to get the best deal. They want to get the, their um, resources as inexpensive as possible. And if you're selling your stuff online or if you're selling your art, of course you want to get your materials as low cost as you possibly can so let's talk about different ways to do that so when you're just starting out wood burning arts and craft stores and buying canvases online is a great place to start there there are a ton 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 of options and you can if you're ordering online you can get it wherever you are i know sourcing wood is tricky because not everybody's going to have the same wood availability in their location. So online purchasing is a really attractive option. You can try out different woods. Basswood is to me one of the best woods for wood burning. It's nice and clean. It's bright. The woods are soft and the grains are soft and it's just a perfect type of wood for wood burning. You can get it in so many different sizes and variations between live edge and plain. It just offers a lot of variety for beginners and you don't have to look really hard to find it. The arts and craft stores offer a lot of other options too. You've got pine canvases and birch canvases. And they're already pre-cut and they're pre-routed and they're ready to go for burning. You just need to do a little bit of prep, a little bit of sanding prep so that the surface is nice and smooth uh, and ready for your burning pin. But other than that, I mean, they're really ready to go. And when you add in the online option, you have so many choices. You can buy from Michaels, from Hobby Lobby, Amazon, and then there are some other retailers online where you can get some more exotic woods like KJP Select. They have a ton of different options. They have some more exotic options that you don't see everywhere else. So if you really wanted to experiment and start trying some different kind of woods, they have a lot of options there. You can also get poplar and basswood there as well. And then there's some smaller retails like Rustic Wood Supply and Aspen Creations. They have some nice rounds and they have different wood availability as well. So if you really search online and start looking for places online to source your wood, it's really going to help you branch out and find different things that may not be available to you in your area. So then you have your big box stores. That's going to be your next step. So if you're interested in making your own canvases, you can go to the big box stores and get um, poplar is what I use the most. But, you know, there's pine and oak. Um, those are the most common ones. Depending on where you live is, you know, there are going to be different options. Not everybody has the exact same wood options per location. If you want to start making your own canvases, I really like poplar, the occasional plywood. Um, you know, some people like oak. I'm not like a huge fan of burning on oak, but I will do it. Um, if I have a really nice canvas that I just really like. You want to move on to the big box stores, you're going to have to get some bigger equipment and start creating your own canvases. You may even want to get a router so that you can route the edges and create some nice clean looking edges. It looks like you've, you know, bought that canvas in a store. And of course, you're going to want to have um, your sander so that you can sand them down. But this gives you a lot of variety as far as what kind of canvases you want to make. If you want to make a particular size or if you want to do some sort of uh, special treatment with them, you can get the wood from the big box stores and make your own canvases in any shape and size that you want. So it offers that type of variety. 
One of the reasons I like the poplar canvases so much is that I can shape them into whatever I want. I'm not limited to what the arts and crafts stores offer. I can create a canvas to my liking. Okay, let's talk pallet wood. So I don't actually recommend burning on pallet wood, but there are a lot of people that do it or are going to do it because it is, it's free. You a lot of times can find pallet wood, you know, on the side of the road or people are getting rid of it. Uh, it is a free source of wood for a lot of people. And it's got stuff on it and it's worn and it's, you know, it's been through its paces, you know, it's been around. Um, that's really an indication of something you could just steer clear of altogether because you don't really know what it's been through. You don't know what's in that wood. Um, you don't know if it has chemicals on it, if there's paint on it, if there's stuff on it that you shouldn't be burning. So use, use caution when you're using pallet wood. Um, if you're just going to go ahead and do it, wear your mask, wear your respirator, um, with organic vapor filters. Um, I'll put a like link below for that. You really should always be wearing your mask, no matter if you're burning raw, clean wood, or if you're burning something that may possibly be toxic. I mean, regardless of what you're burning, you should be wearing your mask because smoke is just not good for your lungs, no matter if it's clean, raw wood or not. So wear your mask, wear your respirator. The other downside is they are a lot of work. You have to pull them apart. Uh, you have to sand them down. You have to, if you want to make a canvas, you have to glue all the pieces together, clamp them, sand them down, do all that kind of stuff. Um, it can get really tedious really quick, and over time it gets to be a hassle. If you if you're selling your art and you really want to start cranking out some stuff, it can get really tedious really quick if you're making a lot a lot of canvases. So let's talk about reclaimed woods. Sourcing reclaimed wood can be a little bit tricky. You're going to have to network, you're going to have to meet people, or maybe you know somebody already that's in construction, or maybe they flip houses, that sort of thing, where they're going to be around wood often that is in an old house or an old building or something along those lines where they're tearing down and they're getting rid of wood and they don't want to reuse the wood. They're not interested in it. So if you can find a source of someone that does that sort of thing, you know, that's a really good option, especially if you have the tools, the equipment to sand it down because you don't want to burn anything that's got varnish on it. You want to sand it down, make sure it's nice and clean and get to the raw wood and you're going to want to cut it. You know, if, you, if you've if you got somebody that's ripping out old floors, you're going to want to have to, you know, cut it, glue it together and do all that stuff. So you're going to need some bigger equipment to do that and uh, some space to kind of glue all that up and have the clamps and do all the things so that you can prep the canvas the way you need it for burning. There's other ways to incorporate reclaimed wood into your pieces without burning it. I like to use it as backers because you can add a really nice decoration to your piece and burn a different piece of wood. You can also use reclaimed wood as a frame. If you want to frame out your piece of burned wood with a nice reclaimed wood, um, we've done this before. So you may be able to incorporate them into your pieces in a way where you don't have to burn them. Okay, so let's talk about sawmills. Uh, this is interesting to a lot of people because you're talking about buying straight, wholesale, cutting out the middleman retail business, right? Um, there are some downsides here. Now, I'm, I'm really inexperienced in this area. I've never bought straight from a sawmill. We have one time had a friend that got a ton of wood from a sawmill and we got a whole trailer full of like oak and walnut and mahogany and all kinds of stuff. I think there was maple in there and beech. So much good wood in there for like 600 bucks. So, while that's expensive up front, it was way, way less than what that wood is actually worth. Like if you, if we went into a store and tried to buy some of that wood that we got, one of those pieces, one of those big, huge walnut pieces that we got would have been easily $600 by itself. So the fact that we got all of that for 600 bucks was a, an enormously good deal. So you can really get some good deals with sawmills, but there are some downsides too. So uh, because I'm inexperienced in this area, I did some research online. I'll put a link below at the art with the article where I found the most information and the most help 
but you know, you can do your own research and, um, you know, find out some more information on your own. But I just wanted to share with you real quick the highlights and the hot points of it. So if you're going to go to a sawmill, you know, it's not like walk, walking into Michael's where you're just going to buy a canvas, right? You're going to have to buy a lot. You're going to have to buy a lot of wood. Um, now you may know somebody or you may have a special deal where he'll, somebody will come and let you just pick a thing, pick something small, scrap, whatever. Uh, but if, if you're new to it, like I was, um, the article suggested that you're going to have to buy in bulk probably. And a lot of sawmills won't sell directly to the consumer. So that's going to be a challenge, finding a sawmill that will sell directly to you unless it's like a smaller one. Maybe you've got like a local sawmill or whatever that will cut you some deals or something. Maybe you can build a relationship there and um, get some deals that way. Maybe they'll give you some of the scraps, some of the smaller pieces that aren't so giant. Uh, but that's the other thing. You're gonna have to buy the giant pieces. So that means you're gonna have to have like a trailer or a truck or something that can, you can haul all this stuff. Like we bought all that wood uh, from that friend of ours and it, they were huge, huge, long pieces of wood. Now, luckily we have a trailer, but if you don't have a trailer, that's, you know, gonna be a downside or you're gonna need a truck or something to kind of haul it all back. Uh, the other thing, Oh, hang on, let me get my thoughts together. <laughs> um, yeah, so because they come in such huge pieces, you're going to have to have equipment to cut it down. Um, you know, you're going to have to have table saws or miter saws, depending on, the, you know, the shape and width of the board and everything. But you're going to have to have some type of saw so that you can cut the stuff down because a lot of it comes in big planks or big sheets or whatever, you know, type of sawmill it is. So <clears throat> keep that in mind. The other thing is it may not be near you. You know, if you if your sawmill is like an hour away, that means you're gonna have to travel and you're gonna have to make plans and appointments and things like that. It's not like running up to Home Depot or running up to Michael's real quick, um, you know, or even ordering stuff online. You're gonna have to make arrangements and that kind of thing. So it's a little trickier. Now, a kind of in between um, like Home Depot, the big box stores and the sawmill is a lumber yard. It's a little bit cheaper than, you know, going to Home Depot. Um, but it's going to cost more than going to a sawmill, but it's a little bit more convenient because it's like a store type setting that you can go to. There are a couple here in Montgomery that we go to and I can get some poplar there. So for example, if I go to Home Depot and get poplar, I can get away with sometimes not taking the trailer, right? If they have the really long planks, they've got that cutting, um, they've got that big cutting station in there. I can cut a plank. It's not that big a deal. So if I just want a plank or, you know, a, a couple of pieces, I can get away with just taking, I've got, I've got an SUV, so I can take my SUV. I don't have to take my trailer. But if we're getting a lot, a lot of pieces, then, you know, we take the trailer. So it just kind of depends on what you're getting. Are you trying to get a ton of wood? Are you just getting a few pieces in there here and there so you have to ask yourself you know what are you what are you doing with your pyrography are you selling it in bulk are you mass producing if that's the case you may want to find the most you know lo the lowest cost resource material available um, if you're just making a few things here and there it may be better to stick with the um, the arts and crafts stores if you are um, kind of in between, maybe the big box stores lumber yard thing is, is a good ticket. Um, lumber yards can be found in most places. I mean, you may be in a remote area where they don't have that kind of thing, or you may be in an area where they don't have a Home Depot or a Lowe's. You may have to travel a little bit. The little town that I grew up in, you had to drive an hour to get to anything. So, uh, maybe completely inconvenient for you to go to Home Depot or Lowe's. You know, ordering online may be your best bet. So it's gonna really depend on your situation, your location. It's gonna depend on what you use your art for as to which wood source and the way you keep your wood inventory in stock. You just have to kind of weigh all the pros and cons of each one and what your needs are and where your location is and all of that good stuff. And if you guys have other ideas or other sources, for you know, sourcing wood, good ideas for sourcing wood, please add to the conversation and pop it in the comments below. I go with what is available to me and what is near me, but I'm sure there are some options out there that I don't know about uh, that may be available to other people in other areas. 
I know there are some people that make their own canvases because they live in a very wooded area and they have you know access and resources to do that sort of thing so if you have information on that please pop in the comments below give us a resource on the ins and outs of that um, that is something that I'm completely unfamiliar with I know that we have in the past like cut pine rounds and done, but you have to wait for them to dry because you can't burn green wood or fresh wood you have to wait for it to dry out but I don't even I'm gonna be honest I don't even remember how we did that I guess we left it out for a long time but I don't remember how long um, I don't burn on those tiny rounds a lot so I don't really remember we must have had it for a long time anyway if you know pop in the comments below so other people can know just add to the conversation you guys add to it and just know that sometimes when you're looking for something special you, you may not get it super cheap you may have to pay a little extra so it just is what it is just roll it into the cost of your art right just roll it in roll it in it'll be all right thanks for watching you guys